इसका नाम क्या है
So uh, uh, we call silvication, we apply the continuous glucose monitoring, and uh, we shift it to that in between 300 to 18 minutes, and last for six minutes uh, before breakfast, eight minutes before dinner, and uh, continue with the record of 20 minutes. Uh, subsequently, we didn't achieve too much good control in spite of our own efforts. Uh, but over a period of time, the HDFNC just fall down in the month of June to 7.1 percent. And subsequently, uh, uh, we didn't reach our target in spite of all our efforts. Uh, and in the month of uh, August, we reached some down to 6.8 percent. And again. And here is a bad outcome. 26 September 2020, again, as a steel at eight months in the So, what could be the culprit for a bad outcome? Uh, you probably have been it uh, while you started with the uh, Eka moves and why it was shifted to the plan in UC and so and so. And so. But we'll talk about which factors really drive the thing. So, everything we are up to it very well. The events you are not showing any content of information, um, no large for gestation is, everything was pretty fine. Uh, so, whether the pre gestational blood glucose is a culprit, which other factors drive the dates, and what is the panic conception blood glucose went through? So, I will discuss the three studies. I went through the literature and found many studies, but I think so that the case which I am. Uh, uh, I have a and uh, I thought of the three studies. The, the first study is the cause of making in front of a woman with a pre-gestational diabetes mellitus in relation to the glycemic control. This is a study from the long period, uh, and it is just uh, pre-existing diabetes, maternal glycemic hemoglobin, and the risk of future in front of a population-based study, again from the registry data. Uh, 1998 to 2006, uh, 1996 to 2008, so pretty long, 10 years data. And outcome of fetus in more than the pre diabetes. This is a study from Spain, uh, actually, a single set of study, around 126 uh, uh, pre gestational uh, uh, diabetes patient population they went through it. So the first study, uh, that is uh, from the North Signal uh, uh, data set. What they have found is uh, the cause of this include anomalies and exceptions. And if you carefully look, the exception rate is quite high, percentage is quite high compared to the anomalies. So ultrasound didn't found any abnormality in these two pregnancies, and still there was a paper. And this data fills the story. And um, not much of different with the appropriate for the gestational age, uh, that is a much made, and last for the gestational age, not much of different. So that's the reason. Even the, even the normal weight baby might have a risk for the especial relative death. Exclusion at this scale work. That should be the uh, danger, that should be the big force, that should be the risk we should carry in our mind. And what is the correlation between the pre gestational and HDK ones in uh, malformation? And uh, this is a very well known fact, and everyone knows, I would like to say. As the HDK ones in most higher, the malformation is goes typically higher. And you can simply look at this data side. Uh, from the last population based study, that is 1996 to 2008, this is a, 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 a North England during 1996 to 2008. And what is cycle we found is that without pre existing diabetes and with pre existing diabetes, so fetal or infant death is four times higher. The first slide is 3.59, significant P value. Uh, uh, Fetal death, if you again carefully look, it's again around roughly 4.5 times higher compared to the without pre-existing diabetes. And late risk energy, steel birth, antipartum, steel birth is six times higher. Steel birth is six times higher. And even after delivery, the neonatal death and the postnatal death is also quite higher, two times higher compared to the 
without pre-existing the hepatitis. So, what about the bad consumption as you can see here, the fetal infant death. So, uh, our second case where uh, pre-consumption as you can see was also high, we didn't reach the good control despite all our efforts. And in this first case also, the, there was a pre-conception, conception high as you see when you So, there is a Jason uh, uh, relationship with every rise in HDE1C with the death rate. So every HDE1C rise, uh, the patient uh, has higher chances for, uh, 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 people have higher chances for uh, uh, the death. So what else is driving the force apart from the uh, regular control? Other factors like ketonemia, or the MIOS is an elevated plus. Early production of insulin and growth factors and excessive formation of free radicals may be a critical factor in diabetes. Uh, I want to deal with the JSA relationship between the HPE1C and odds of the fetal deaths. And the striking uh, point uh, from this study, not much of a difference between the type of diabetes, whether it's a type 1 diabetes or a type 2 diabetes, not much of a difference with the, uh, this uh, outcome. But unfortunately, <clears throat> even though we quite rely on actually the one city, uh, with the many studies, we couldn't uh, uh, do a HDE1 case and a direct correlation or a set a cut point where we can say that from this cut point, the patient might have higher chances for the terrorism, we might have higher chances for the birth asphyxia. So it is not a stable diagnostic tool. And several studies are consistent with, several studies are not consistent with. So we require a um, uh, diagnostic tool, other parameters. And that's an open ended question for all of us. So, what could be the reason for this birth situation actually? Uh, the high blood glucose leads to angiogenic effects which affects the blood vessels of the cell and uterine. And uh, as we all know, the hypertensive related to increased production of advanced ligation and production activation of protein vitamin C. Diabetic hemoglobin may be caused by increased production of free radicals. And uh, vasoactive agents like endothelin 1, prostate, and E2 are raised in pregnancy. So, might be, this might be a tool to uh, predict uh, the placental insufficiency and fetal hypoxia. So, my take home message for all of us, including me, is be vigilant if you encounter pre gestational diabetes and counsel the patient relative for possible outcome at every visit. So, at what point of the time? you will have a bad outcome we don't know. And of course, of course, emphasis with the good blood glucose control. And pre-gestational diabetes where we need to have a separate base of conception care actually particularly. Because most patients when with the pre-gestational diabetes, when they become pregnant, they are not sugar level, they are not under control, that we all know this true fact. So let's do uh, more discussion, let's come out so with a uh, uh, for future, um, uh, uh, let's come out with a good discussion that we will have a very more good outcome with the pre-gestational diabetes pregnancy. Thank you very much.